Hey friends, it's Marlon Gibbons. Thank you for joining me here at Music in the Making. Um, this week's topic, I think, could be very helpful to a lot of you that are trying to get into music libraries, uh, but more specifically get your music placed in TV and film. And I didn't come up with this week's topic. I think it was a great question that was posed on one of my other, or asked on one of my other videos. And that was from Terry. So thank you, Terry, for the topic. It's a really good one. I think it could help a lot of us. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try and break down what I would do. Um, and as with any of my videos, take it with a grain of salt. This is what has worked for me. <clears throat> so I'll just share what I do and uh, hope it's of value to you. The question that Terry asked was, how would I go about producing a track or tracks for a stock library? And also, how would I do so in a timely manner? Um, and I think just simply meaning without spending, you know, five days on one production. So uh, I'm going to answer those questions and hopefully they're of some help to you. And uh, yeah, stick around. Okay, so recap, the question is, how would I go about producing a track for a production library, a music library, and how would I do so in a timely manner? So this first thing I'm gonna tell you addresses the, the, time, the time thing. Create a sound palette. Uh, whatever genre you're writing in, if it's electronic or, or orchestral or rock, whatever the case, create a whole bunch of tones, sounds, dial in different pedals, w whatever you're using. Um, so you have a whole, um, let's say color palette of, of tones and sounds that you can use, whether it's synths or guitars or whatever the case. So have that. And the reason I say that is because let's pretend that I sit down with a piano, uh, patch and I, and I write a melody or a chord structure that I really like. I don't then want to go saying, okay, let's build on this and then have to go search at a bunch of other sounds that are going to. I'm going to layer on top of the piano. I want them to be right there already. So what I'm going to show you is, is I've written a couple orchestral pieces with a little bit of electronic fusion in them. So I came up with a, um, a fairly big sound palette first with, you know, a string section and some horns and some percussion and that, and that kind of stuff. Um, if it's electronic, maybe you have a whole ton of different synths and that kind of thing going on. Um, but the idea is that once you come up with a creative idea, you want to keep those creative juices flowing and just drop down to the next track or the next five tracks to find a sound that complements that first melodic idea. See if you can create that, that sound palette first. That would be my first, I guess, time-saving idea. Okay, the, the next approach is, is kind of a big one. Um, I still use it with most of the tracks I write. It's, it's not always the case, but, um, but definitely most of the time it's, it's this. I write in blocks of four or eight bars. Um, sometimes it's two if it's a little transitional thing, but for the most part, I start at bar one and I write in blocks of four and eight bars uh, and go across like that, like so. And why this is important is that in most of the library stuff, it's chopped up. And I, I know I sound very repetitive and I've said this in a lot of my videos. Um, a lot of the times your tracks are chopped up. So if you're writing in four and eight bars, it makes the editor's job so much easier. It's just a piece of music that is, is really um, usable. So, and, and again, I'll explain that as I go through. So I've written um, a really simple, very repetitive sounding orchestral piece. But again, keep in mind, it's repetitive if you listen to the whole two minute, minutes of it. Um, it does have dynamics and some changes but it's not as repetitive if you're only listening to eight bars at a time. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you, although is orchestral with a bit of a um, electronic fusion, that's irrelevant. Um, it doesn't matter what you're writing, what style, if it's electronic um, or, or guitar, it, it's still applicable. So what I'm gonna show you is, for the first two bars, I introduce a single instrument with a specific melody, and that kind of sets the tone. Pretty simple. Um, at bar three, I introduce a cello doing that. So it's so it's, it's pretty straightforward. That cello has a supportive role, so it, it doesn't overpower the the main melody that I've started with. Um, it just helps support it. 
and also at bar three. So in that bar four, I add kind of a, a pad that I've added a bit of movement to and kind of put a, made it a little bit grainy. So with its low frequency, again, it's supportive. It's underneath everything else that's going on. Um, and we're only talking three tracks here, but it's it sets a tone um, and it, it's slowly um, growing and building towards the first 16 bars. So simple piece, maybe it's a synth, maybe it's a guitar, what, a piano, whatever. It starts out as a melody, a theme, and then you're adding to support that initial idea. You can use frequency, you can use rhythm, um, there's different ways to do that. And then I, on the fourth, I added another viola. So the point I'm trying to make is for the first 16 bars, it's really simple and perhaps repetitive sounding, but keep in mind that most of this stuff is usually underscore, so you don't want it um, taking over. It's not intended to be featured. Um, so I have a tone. Now that continues throughout the entire piece, that, that idea, that um, concept. So for the first 16 bars, it, it slowly grows. And then at bar nine, I add in that second viola. And um, it's really only four tracks for the first 16 bars. Now the cool thing about that is, and I really want to emphasize this, is that for the first 16 bars, I can, I can set a loop. It's, it's written in such a way, and all of my sections are written in such a way that you can loop them. So that's really important. Um, so we'll go on to the next section. Coming into bar 17. Two, three, four. So, so you can still hear the main theme going on, but I've added a few other things. There's a really subtle pizzicata in there. Clearly there's... Um, so I introduced percussion at 17. Um, there's a couple other, uh, I guess, colors as far as tone goes. Um, and again, this is orchestral. It could be any style that you're writing in. Um, so when I hit with the percussion, which is just a couple layers of different big drums, um, that certainly adds a whole new um, interesting perspective to the piece, right? It, it heightens those different emotions that maybe this is evoking. Um, and then, so that goes for a few bars. And then I introduce, there's a couple horns coming in. that's the next 16 bars so I could loop that as well um, and the idea is there is as that goes across it slowly grows in intensity um, and doing that there's a few different ways you can do that you can increase the volume of different things um, certainly adding automation to the mix creates that that breathing kind of effect um, the swelling of the um, horns because they kind of grow um, that would do it you can do that with a synth too um, you know, swells, sweeps, rises, drops, all those things create so much life in different mixes that um, it keeps it really interesting. So it still has somewhat of a, um, not subdued nature, but it's it still has somewhat of a underscore-ish, laid-back kind of feel. Um, but as you can see, I added quite a few more tracks, including rhythm, um, some big drums, that adds a lot. So, coming into the next section, what I added was um, drums. Now they're laid pretty back and I soaked them in reverb because I have other, I have other things going on percussively in that, in that mix. So, so what I was doing there was just a simple, and I have a, 
a big 1176 compressor on there too, just squashing it so it sounds kind of um, all dirty. So my point being, so it gets a little even bigger in this third section. Um, trailer music tends to have this kind of build to it and form, but this isn't isn't quite that um, aggressive or intense. So then I add a bit of a synth. Underneath it's just got a gritty synth. So obviously it's grown a lot at this point. And then it breaks down to a whole lighter section. So again, that third section, just as one and two, you could loop the third section. And this is a little different than the original melody I started with. So it gives a little bit of a, um, a reprieve, a little bit of a breath of fresh air. Add a simple piano lying there, just a new sound, new tone. It's building into, I think what we can all expect is a, is a bigger ending, right? So again, I, I realize that that's orchestral. Um, maybe you write in orchestral, and, and that's great. Um, but if you write in any different style, the form still applies. That you're building and layering as you go, creating um, interesting sounds every new few bars, um, and make those bars loopable or editable in the sense that you can take sections and then cut them, and it would work great. Um, and, and yeah, just. Be creative with your your sounds too. If it's it's synth, and use all kinds of you know delays and effects and, and that kind of stuff. Um, just so you get a, a unique sound. That's all. Um, and although orchestral isn't necessarily a unique sound, um, I tried to be creative with some of the synth lines and stuff I was using to to make them unique anyway. Um, so that's that's track one. So my advice is. Um, write in groups of maybe four, eight bars at a time, make them loopable, um, introduce new tones and sounds uh, every few bars, um, and, and grow with intens intensity. I mean, maybe it's a happy track that you're writing, maybe, and that's fine too. This, this has kind of more of a, a dramatic feel to it, um, but in, in any kind of emotion that you're trying to depict, that it's just keep it, keep it interesting throughout those those bars so okay so this this piece is a little a little different you could say it's more um, mosaic in the sense that all of the sections are completely different um, it's and again you could still edit and cut all of the different sections but they all have a kind of a different flavor it's still orchestral electronic um, but again it's it's they're all a little different so this one starts a little more intense given the drums big heavy drum sounds, there's a electric feedback kind of guitar sound, strings are in there obviously, and I've set a loop so when it, when it hits bar, hit a bar 12, it runs back, so that's a loop what you just heard, um, so I kind of spoke to that in the last one is that all of these sections have loops, so ending, ending there going into the next section, So the melody, the melody changes, key doesn't change. Drums drop out. So that was a small section um, going into two. Again, you could loop that. Similar to the first, it's just the melody changes. There's higher percussion sounds. Another section, each one of these sections would stand on its own. So there's a big, I don't know if the camera hears it, there's a big drop there, a sub drop, uh, but there's also a swell going into it, a triangle, kind of that growly sound underneath. So everything drops out here, um, 
So you gotta be picturing this under under a scene in TV, right? So it's so it's, there's a I don't know competition or something going on, right? So it's slowly building. And you do that with doing a kind of ascending type uh, passages. So, again, very different than the first one in that there's a lot more edits or sections, so to speak. They all have the same tone, sort of, in the sense that it's, it's kind of orchestral electronic. Some of the melodies change. It's all in the same key. Um, I can layer that and stem that out as well. Maybe I could remove the percussion, and a lot of those pieces would still work. Um, I could pull out just the strings from it. Um, so that's another important point that I, I should add too is that um, it, whatever style you're writing in, uh, make it scalable in that you can pull out different layers um, and, and bring it right down to to almost you know one or two tracks. Um, that happens a lot with my music that gets placed is that when I provide stems, they end up using one or two tracks as opposed to one or two. Um, tracks as opposed to uh, you know the whole produced piece so yeah so I hope that was a little bit helpful um, please don't be confused in in the fact that I did and that I, I showed you an example of orchestral um, you know electronic I'm, I'm not saying submit an orchestral electronic track I'm saying that whatever style you're writing in submit a track that has sections um, that incorporate intensity, um, interesting sounds and tones that change in those different sections, um, create levels of intensity like that, that kind of build and grow and drop off. And um, I mean, again, it's, it's usually reality television. There's a lot of drama in that stuff. So it's, um, you think about, you know, the dynamics in, in, in what you're supporting. Um, that's it's a really important point to remember is that you're supporting something else uh, it's not meant to be a featured piece not not usually sometimes it is but um, for the but to the question I'm trying to answer or help if you're submitting a piece um, you definitely want areas that could be looped um, that build in intensity that are interesting and that can be scalable um, as far as time, um, it helps definitely to build a palette before. Um, I have orchestral templates or electronic templates um, it, with inside of my DAW. I, I'm using Logic X, but it really doesn't matter what you're using. Um, you can create templates in, in any DAW. Um, and, and yeah, I, in my studio, I tend to work with all my guitars are to my left. Um, all my, my equipment is everything to my right. Um, I have all my, my files, like kind of a file management system where everything's named. Um, in, in ways that I can search things out and find them quickly so it, it helps to be really organized in that way too so good luck with whichever libraries you guys are hitting um, there's tons of them out there now uh, you just gotta find one that you feel works well for you that their their deals are fair um, and that your music is applicable to what they're doing and um, and I think if you employ some of these these um, practices and, and ideas, I definitely think it will help. Uh, I can't guarantee that, of course, but I, I'm telling you, they've certainly helped. Uh, they've helped me along the way. So cheers, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in.